trying to cover up the murder. I'm sorry, yeah. I had to. Yeah, I just got a message saying the recording is in progress and everything. So yeah, I mean, you know, um, I am I am a, a staunch believer in the Second Amendment, so I'm a, I'm a supporter of the Second Amendment. So gun violence isn't again, you know, I, I, uh, Rhonda and myself actually had a conversation uh, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, basically, you know, the guns do not kill people, and this is the this is the conversation. Yeah, this is the conversation I'm having with a lot of. Uh, uh, white people at gun shows because I go to gun shows and I talk to people, you oh. know, and uh, there, you know, we have to open ourselves up to people, but we also still have to be conscious and be uh, mentally uh, have the mental fortitude to understand where they're coming from and not so much hate the hate their message all the time because we have to uh, realize that sometimes they don't understand. Right. Oh. So they, they're standing on the, uh, one other end of the spectrum while we're standing on the other. And we're trying to bridge gap, you know, through knowledge. You know, and mm-hmm. I think that uh, when you have two people coming from two different spectrums and they they uh, are ignorant, and I'm I'm just saying uh, in, in the fact of, of being ignorant, not really knowing what the uh, real battle is or what the true fight is, you're going to have those clashes, uh, you know, uh, with those with those folks. But a lot of um, white people there for their Second Amendment because the Constitution is the uh, foundation to the sovereignty of this nation. I understand that a lot of things need to change. Um, but we have to uh, make sure uh, th- these Democrats are not uh, providing the change that we need, uh, or, or the government. Either side of the aisle, I will say, uh, neither side of the neither side of the aisle is actually providing us with the things that we need to uh, survive. So, you know, I, I'm of the you know uh, be independent until these people actually come to grips with who we really are and uh, let us actually di- uh, dictate our own narrative, as opposed to allowing the Democrats to dictate our narrative because, you know, when we start looking at groups like the NAACP and the Southern Christian Le- Leadership Coalition, they're not leading us. You know, they're basically being told what to do. And then we follow because we look look up to these people, to, to these groups and everything. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things that we have to address in the Black community and within starting with our own families and then within our own households and everything. And actually with, within yourself as well. You know, um, you know, we have to teach these children that are coming up to think a different way. And uh, I just kind of wanted to, you know, throw that in there uh, as uh, Ms. No, Norman in this conversation. No, no, well, that, I'm glad you did. Anytime our people are cutting up relatives and, and, and I mean, it used to be a time you could hear the crime and you just kind of understood, but we are dealing with some things present day and that's why as the mental health uh, advocates and let me just stop because i haven't identified us we didn't just started talking <laughs> up. Uh, it's your girl it's your girl guys you know we have these technical issues and we are recording so if there are any issues on the other side just know that we're going to upload this link and get it out to everybody um and please do us a favor and share the link Our guest this week is Mr. Greg Turner. Greg is a very dear colleague of mine. And just like us, we're out here of this generation trying to understand how we can affect the populations, right? The culture um, that we currently find ourselves in, we're kind of go-betweens. We're not really dictating our own path, in my opinion, I'll say. Having ran for office in the District of Columbia, one of the things that I find myself faced with seven months after election is that much of what I campaigned on and for is still of issue, right? And so we're gonna talk about it tonight because we have uh, uh, points and, and, and opinions from the sideline, but we're not talking enough. We're not talking in the right spaces and places. And are we being accountable out there? You saw tonight's show, Palms Up, talks about, are you woke? It's always nice to get the conversation started because nowhere like in Washington, D.C., my beautiful hometown, in the nation's capital, have I seen more sideline professors? And I, I don't, I'm okay with that. I, I like to talk. I got to get the gag comes up. But when you're doing all that talking and then we don't have enough people voting, that's when I get bothered. So, guys, it's your girl, it's your girl. For the next hour, we're going to talk about some issues, and it may make you feel a way, right? We're the Palms Up Show. We bring the controversy, right? Because nobody wants to talk about mental health. Mental health comes with stigma. And that's why it's important that we get to know the people in front of us. You start having people to teach you to like people because of the color of the skin, 
we start having conversations where people tell you to go with or get with because everybody else is, then shame on you. There's no reason to be living like that. And if we are not consciously woke, and by woke, we mean aware of our surroundings, our conversations, our responsibilities, our dedications, and where they should be to our children, then I don't know. I don't know if you can call yourself woke if you're not involved, engaged, and taking on the responsibility to educate. We used to have a saying, what was it, each one teach one? But we're so divided in our community and on the ground that it's important that we have these conversations. So that's my intro, guys. Go to healthydcandme.org, spell and out. If you'd like to get the link, you come in. Palms up. Just know that we're going to uh, upload this link as soon as the show wraps up. Mr. Turner, thank you so much for joining us. I promised you that we were just going to have an easy conversation. And we're already starting off talking about the shootings. Um, mm -hmm. uh, our dear Stacy White is on the line, who is one of our board members, and she told us that there's a breaking news as we're coming onto the Palms Up platform that we've got a shooting at a funeral, burying a little girl. Mr. Turner, what say you when we come on and do a show about being woke and we find out just as we're coming on? I haven't even got to the other headlines because we're still creating headlines. They're shooting at a funeral for a baby. A little girl. What's your yeah, thought? yeah. I mean, uh, men mental health is real. You know, uh, mental health is real, and uh, a lot of the things that we are dealing with, uh, so far as mental health, has been uh, caused by um, you know uh, lack of uh, employment, uh, the environment for which we're growing up in, the mm -hmm. food that we eat. You know, uh, mental health is real, and uh, that leads to the violence. You know, um, you know, so there, there's there's plenty of things that that are, are feeding into uh, these situations that we face every day. You know, you go outside, you don't know whether you're going to come home or not, you know, and, and I think about inside. it all the time. Yeah, I, I always think about the people who die or you hear about dying. You know, you, you just say to yourself, I wonder if that person woke up this morning knowing mm -hmm. that this was his last day as a, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the flesh. You know what I mean? That's so, real talk. Yeah. That is real yep. talk. And you know what else I, I have to say? I mean, we, you know, God is in control. Our higher beings are in control um, when we understand, you know, our date that we leave here. So we, we can never know, right? But the reality, the reality of where we are in our society that we're burying so many children, so many children. And it's, you know, cancer is bad. That's a whole nother conversation, right? Um, we have issues, we just came out of a pandemic, but the reality that the senseless violence would be at the helm of it, and, and, and I'm going right to the heart of this conversation because I'll say it and I'll say it again, guns do not kill people, they can't shoot themselves. Mm -hmm. and, and whether you on the right side or the left side or somewhere in the middle, it's time to be engaged. The nation's yeah. capital, when I look at our, our, our language as an organization, for the better part of the last five years, we've been crying for the guns to stop. It's gotten to the point that it's almost as numbing as wearing a rest in peace shirt and going to a vigil. It's just starting to become the norm, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just not okay. Guys, for a minute, I want to pause, but I want to talk to you guys about this, this gun issue because our legislators use it, I feel, to keep us at odds or keep us apart from the political conversation that they need to control. What do I mean by that? DC is a democratic state. I don't have anything against you, Democratic, Republican, Independent, or Green Party, whatever your uh, uh, selection is. The reality is whatever party you serve or that you subscribe to, there should be a level of accountability. At the end of the day, uh, uh, Yes, Mr. Turner talked about the Constitution when we first came on and the reality of the Constitution being in place in order that we all can have justices and liberties that we are afforded. And, and that gives us the freedom of choice to choose our representations, but that does not alleviate or, or eliminate our abilities to be responsible and to demand that of everybody around us. And obviously, if it was that simple, we wouldn't have as much of a clash as we do. Now, with that said, June is recognition for the uh, uh, violence or gun violence month. 
In addition to that, June is also the month for cancer survivor awareness. It's also uh, the month for men's health awareness. It's also the month of pride. So to our LGBTQ community out there, I hope I'm saying it politically correct. Those of you that celebrated, happy pride. In addition to that, it is also National PTSD Month, post-traumatic stress disorder. And for a long time, we thought that that was something that only folks in the military would have. Again, that's that narrative that we're being fed through the media and we have to take responsibility to go further to get our information. So with that said, National PTSD Awareness, that's a great segue. PTSD from ongoing gun violence, from ongoing trauma um, is real in the regular everyday community life. Shooting at the funeral, guns are going off everywhere. The mayor's calling a meeting, asking the community what to do about the crime. Guys, let's talk about this gun situation. Conti, former police chief, Conti says that violent crimes can be directly linked to illegal guns. What comes to mind when you hear that? Did you want anybody? <laughs> anybody, yeah. yeah. So uh, with, with, uh, just kind of comment on that statement there uh, that the uh, police chief, I mean, you, I mean, if we take the guns away, this is how I look at it. If we take the guns away you're, and you don't do anything about the mental uh, health issues, uh, they would use a knife. They would use a hammer. You know what I'm saying? They would use a car you know, mm. automobile to run people over, you know, they, they would do things like that. I, you know, you see violence carried out uh, that way as well, but they're highlighting the, um, the, the, it's easy to blame the guns and uh, advertise that on the news because they can di di dictate the narrative. They're actually trying to disarm Americans. Uh, and, and the red flag for me is that there are over 40 million uh, gun owners out here and most of the crimes are being, uh, being carried out by people who don't have registered firearms. Mm -hmm. You know, their, their firearms, DC has the uh, strictest laws and some, some of the strictest laws in the United States. And yet we have all this uh, high level of uh, gun violence in the city. Mm -hmm. So where are these guns actually coming from is the question, right? And how are these guys actually getting their guns? Are they getting them through straw man purchases? Are their girlfriends actually purchasing the uh, weapons for them? And half of these guys don't even understand the gun laws uh, that are purchasing these guns, these young kids and stuff, but that are that even getting these guns. Because I see young kids at the gun shows too, you know, mm -hmm. and they um they purchase guns. And then if you live in Virginia, it's so easy to get them. Mm -hmm. But we have to understand the responsibility behind it, right? And you have to start mm -hmm. holding people accountable. Like, I mean, if, if these kids are 17 years old committing murders, because I think the highest rate of gun violence is between, I want to say 17 and 24 or something like that. Uh, somewhere yeah, around those numbers and those are young kids those are those are babies mm -hmm. you know and, and half mm -hmm. of these kids do not understand the gun laws out here i mean even in you know i, I look at these uh things this, there's a big thing about uh, pistol brace laws right now and a pistol brace is like a, a thing that straps around your arm it was created for disabled veterans to be able to uh, fire their firearms because they can't hold a gun, you know, a, a, a gun with like both hands or whatever the case may be. If they lost an arm or something, they can hold it, hold the uh, firearm like a pistol. A lot of people don't know that. And you're not even supposed to shoulder this uh, shoulder, a uh, 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 wrist brace and things of that nature. There are rules behind it. And we're, we're not following those rules, you know. And uh, one of the things comes uh, that comes should come up with gun ownership before you even have a gun is education, you know. And, and a lot of these kids out here that are doing this killing, they know nothing. I, I'm almost positive they know nothing about the gun laws out here, you know, carrying on. I mean, on, on TV, flashing guns and stuff. Uh, that one basketball player, uh, Jay, John Morant, you know, mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he's flashing hang guns and things of that nature, you know, on his videos and stuff and getting himself in trouble. You know, this kid makes millions of dollars. He doesn't have to do that, you know. But, uh, and that's this, such uh, a good point. And I'll yeah. save it in this space. I don't mean to cut you off. But no, it's that's fine. That's how fine. we do we do this show because we want the conversation to resonate. Now, where are the people around him to help him understand that what he's doing jeopardizes the fortune that he would probably otherwise not, otherwise not have had it not be for his talent? So where are the people around him? I remember Gladys Knight made a statement a little bit off the subject, but on the subject. She was talking about Michael Jackson and, and, and when you know they were going at him 
for, you know, supposedly with the children or what have you. And regardless of whether you think he did it or not, the reality is that we are the people around him to help him to understand that to continue to make the decisions the way you're making them are keeping you in harm's way, right? Yeah. Whether he's doing it or not, where are the people around you to keep you grounded enough to be able to help you understand when you about to wreck yourself? Yeah, and yeah, and I, and I, I agree, um, Rondo, on that. Um, but I, I want to say that you know the TV program is uh, plays this part as well. You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. from what I understand, John Morant uh, didn't even live that kind of life growing up. You know, and uh, to want to be affiliated with something like that, th th there has to be some type of outside influence in his home. You know, and uh, and and the parents do not have they they are actually allowing a lot of parents are allowing their children to be entertained by other children. You know, mm -hmm. and if you if you don't um, play the, play your part in that child's life, you know they will find, uh, you know they will find attention elsewhere. You know, yes, understand what I'm saying? And uh, yes, and it could be the wrong influence, and uh, those yes. kids end up going out here and doing the wrong thing. You know. And but I'm so you know glad what? you said that. Come on, sis. Come on. We talk about guns. See, we keep talking about physical guns, mm -hmm. but before they pick up the physical gun, and I tell everybody, we all carry a gun. Mm -hmm. See, it starts here first. It, it starts right here first. Love how it. we treat somebody, how somebody treat us. And it mm -hmm. becomes a buildup. And then they start picking up the physical guns. So, mm -hmm. so if we're going to really deal with this gun thing, we all got to take accountability. What gun do you carry? Like mm -hmm. when I'm having a bad day, my gun loaded. Everybody going mm -hmm. to get it. It's just right. that it's not a physical one. That's right. Mm -hmm. And That's let's right. talk about that for a minute, because that goes right to the heart of accountability. Um, just because somebody's having a bad day doesn't justify, you know, uh, you being able to not be in control of your behavior or whatever it is that's coming out of your mouth. At the end of the day, we're human beings. And if you're feeling away, then if nine times out of 10, somebody else is feeling away. When we talk about conflict resolution, when we talk about understanding mental health, talk about being preventative. It's not necessarily about recognizing just where you are because you've been you've been you for a while. So you know what you're capable of. But when are you going to challenge yourself to start adjusting that? And that's what we talk about when we're talking about accountability, when we're talking about the 80 centers of wellness. That's right. I got a segue. 80 centers of wellness helps us to be able to be uh, uh, accountable, not only to ourselves, but to those around us. And if we're thinking in the mindset of such, then there's no reason for us to be popping off and and and, and not being able to control our mouth. Because if we can't control our mouth, we don't need to have a gun. And that is the case with many of our citizens. And also, you talk about being educated. First of all, if you're not educated in the sense of, of doing what you're supposed to do in a grade school education, uh, 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 coming out, you know, looking to better yourself mindset, then you're not going to be educated yeah. about doing the right thing any, anywhere else because you couldn't do it in a structured environment. So what yeah. is going to hold you accountable outside of those boundaries to go and get knowledgeable about being responsible when we sent you to the place to get that responsibility well, and you chose to do something different? Come on, sis. Part of the problem is, I'll give you a prime example. I got a call a day from a parent that was really pissed and wanted to take it to another level. Her daughter had been being picked on and picked on and picked on. And they were picking on her at school and even when they weren't at school. And the daughter got tired and they kept messing with her. She wasn't on the school property and beat that chick's behind. And when she got to school today, they suspended her. And she wasn't even on school property. And it's an honor roll student. So again, the system is so jacked up. Like yeah. you try to do right. And when you do right, you get penalized. So that's yeah. some of the problems right there. Some of the but other problems not. is parents. When the, the teachers would first day of school tell them if your parent holler at you, your parent touch you, it's sexual abuse, or this is happening, that's happening, and the investigation go on in the house, here's that gun being built up. Like, okay, I'm damned if I do. I'm damned if I don't. So if I'm going to go down, I might as well go for the jugular. Because sometimes you get more more time for beating up somebody than killing somebody, if we're going to be real about it. Yeah, and, and the truth of the matter is, the bottom line is we come from a day and an era, our generation, 
where it wasn't a choice, right? You mm -hmm. fought, you saw them the next day, you either made up or you just didn't like them yep. the whole year, but they were still here. Mm -hmm. So the reality of us, we're dealing with a couple of things here. I hear us talking about it, but I want to be responsible and I want to acknowledge we have an age group from the age 10 years of age to 34 years of age that are committing suicide at a faster rate mm -hmm. than anybody else. Yeah. So we can have these conversations and, and, and from the vein of right or wrong, but who are we going to help when we have such a large window of population of people? I say to my uh, older folks, because a lot of times when we do our workshops with our troubled uh, souls around suicide, one of the things we consistently hear is that the generational divide is one of the, the largest contributory factors to why we see our youth perishing and, and taking their life. Um, of course, like uh, Mr. Turner mentioned, we've got school and virtual understandings and social media understandings that are influencing even other children and other people because these children may be missing something at home and maybe not. If you're an impressionable person, whether mm -hmm. you got everything at home or not, you're going to constantly have to have reinforcements because there's something called self-esteem, mm -hmm. self-awareness. You know, we all have our challenges. So if you throw mental health in the mix, if it's visible mental health, then a lot of our children with visible mental health, they just want to be accepted. So mm -hmm. a lot of times they get pulled in just because they're trying to be accepted. So that gang culture or somebody else cares about me more than what's going on at mm -hmm. home. And it's so easy for them to fall off track. Let's talk about these crime statistics. I like uh, your input so far, guys. Thanks so much for this conversation guys it's your girl it's your girl and it's the palms up show and it's time to have a conversation we can't always be singing and popping our fingers although that's therapeutic as well we got to take time out to have conversations amongst ourselves because you know one of the things i constantly hear you know running for office we have to be able to mix it up with different types i'll never forget where i come from and i'll always be working in the better interest of moving our culture forward but on the same token we got to prepare our children to sit at that table guys all the issues we have in our community, be that as it may, gentrification is not something we can stop. And I don't know if it's something that has to be stopped in a sense. And, and I hate to say that because people think, oh, what is she saying? I'm not saying it's okay to push us out, not at all. But I come from real estate, right? And property values are gonna go up. Mm -hmm. And if you're the nation's capital, you want your school systems performing well, you want your crime low, you want integrated communities. Why? Because it's time to be forward thinking. And the way that we're existing as a city is not forward thinking. So of course we're holding on to all these insecurities that, oh God, here they come and they pushing us out. Well, don't let them put us, push us out. Let's vote. Let's hold parties. You know, I, my grandparents, they used to meet in the laundry room around 6th Street. They told us it was the ghetto, but I didn't know nothing about no ghetto because my people was active. They were involved. So I felt middle class because I was up on the issues. But what I'm saying is our children are depending on us to get involved on a level so that we can change things. Stop being negative and deciding that because another particular uh, uh, group of people uh, are doing something that you're not doing. So that means that they're wronging you and they may be. But what are you going to do about it? All I kept hearing is that, oh, you know, January 6th, if that had been Black people uh, charging the Capitol, well, what? okay, we get that. So now what? Now what? Yeah, so I mean, all, I, all I want us to do is to be willing to have our consciousness raised. And the only way we can do that is to open our mind and our hearts. Just because we feel a way does not give us the right to hold a society accountable. We still every day have to be accountable to who we are in this world, period. We got to work on conflict resolution. We got to graduate more of our kids from school. We have to get those guns out of their hands. We have to vote and get these leaders that allow for community centers to be closed up instead of open to find a way to nurture a lost soul. We got work to do in our communities. I agree with the criticism of our, uh, uh, I don't like the word enemy, but our folks that are on the other side of the aisle but be, my grandmother always told me that you don't talk about anybody else's backyard until you clean your own now. Mm -hmm. And I try to operate from that. So with that said, 
The graduation rate in DC is 72.5%. Prince George's County has a graduation rate of 77.6%. Uh, DC's is an increase by 8%, I'm sorry, increased by 2%, which means we were at 70.5% last year. And of course, this is out of 100. PG went up 1.5%. And then Virginia is 89%. And Virginia ranked 13 out of 50 states on the scale or the wheel for uh, schools. I was trying to see the ratings for DC. It's adjusted. And so they're showing us different statistics for that. The last statistic I saw in 2018 show DC students, uh, uh, our graduation rate in terms of education and overall, we were 49 out of 50 states. If you wanna understand why these guns are going off and why we're in the space that we're in, look at our statistics nationally and locally. Look at the amount of people we have self-medicated, right? It was opioid and now it's fentanyl. Guys, talk to me when you hear the graduation rate and how we compare to Maryland and Virginia. What are you hearing? So, so I, I think what's happening uh, as, as well is uh, the uh, uh, school to prison pipeline is still open, right? For uh, a lot of our youth coming through schools and a lot of our youth are being pushed through the, through the system, you know, mm -hmm. um, because the class sizes are large and everything, but these students get out here and um, half of them are reading that a uh, you know, third grade, uh, can't even read at a third grade uh, level. You know, um, the education that we're receiving is just not the education that we as ancient uh, ancient people are used to, uh, to learning. Uh, our, our, learn, the way, our way of learning is a lot different than yes. what the system uh, has in this cur curriculum and the way that uh, these teachers are actually teaching because they have to follow a script as well uh, when they're teaching our youth. And it's just not it's just not conducive to how we think and uh, how our minds work and how we actually learn and retain the things that are being taught to us. And, and that has to change. You know, uh, we have to change that. And um, within this system, I don't know if we can change it. Uh, so I always push I always push more for uh, self-reliance. But that requires a, a level of sacrifice that a lot of uh, people of color yeah. are not willing to make. You know, so we hold on to the system, uh, but we have to look at things. Uh, we're losing kids at an alarming rate, you know, uh, in this in this world. And if we don't fix that and we don't make the sacrifices that we need to make as a people, then those the generations behind these children that are losing their life now are just going to uh, be pushed down that same path. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not so much for the system itself. You know, I'm, I'm, so, I'm for self-reliance uh, and learning and everything. Uh, just mm -hmm. like I look at you know, you look at certain uh, ancient cultures uh, in Egypt was one of them, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and the way we actually learn is basically putting us under like a spell, you know, because they teach you how to spell when you're a kid, right? Mm -hmm. So, and what, what is the first thing they do when they teach you how to spell that you have to learn your what, your ABCs, right? ABCs, that's right. Mm -hmm. So you sound everything out and then they come up with all these different rules and spelling. So they'll say, hey, spell mm -hmm. the word at. You, you know, after you sound your, uh, you understand your um, alphabet, you're saying A-T, then you say, oh, spell the word pat uh, or bat, mm -hmm. uh, B-A-T. Okay, like now spell the word cat and the child is going to automatically think because children have a supreme, uh, supreme knowledge when they're mm -hmm. born yeah. and we have to just lead them down that right path. So that child is going to think about how he's been taught something and he's going to spell cat with a K. Mm -hmm. and because you know what? the K they, makes they, it they allow that too now, Greg. Like yeah. now, the students aren't required to learn how to do a complete sentence. That's right. Like when I when mm -hmm. I came to school, when we had a sentence, we had to do a map. What was the verb? What was the adjective and all that? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, another thing, when you look at our students in this area, they don't have books. And when yeah. I talk to the teachers, the teachers don't even have books. Everything mm -hmm. is pulled off the internet. Yes. That the teachers are timed a certain amount of time for English, 15 minutes. They can't go over that. Back yeah. in the day, if a student was in a class, did not understand, that teacher did not move from that subject until that student understand. And then when the kids go home from school, the parents can't help them because there's no textbooks. There's right. no examples. 
Right. Mm -hmm. and, and then a lot of parents don't even understand technology either, so no. they can't really get on the mm -mm. computer and do things. Mm -mm. So, you know, it, and then going back to the spelling things, you know, ancient Egyptians were not even allowed to write at one time, you know, mm -hmm. and, and we come from that lineage. This mm -hmm. is why they, they drew pictures to tell their stories, and it's mm -hmm. called, they were called hieroglyphs. Mm -hmm. In ancient mm -hmm. Egypt, you didn't see any languages. Mm -hmm. And then they start teaching us how to spell with these letters and these silent words and stuff. And it's actually casting a spell on us and they can control your consciousness. All right, so we're more audio. We're more I'm audio sorry. than reading. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. we, 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 like, we, we, we're more into the vibration yes. of, this, of this universe. Yeah, like my nephew, you know, when we homeschooled him, we had to take him out of school because mm -hmm. when he was reading, he would drum on his desk. Mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. said that he was disturbing him. But no, when we no. brought him home in homeschool, as he was drumming, he was comprehending what he That's was doing. That's right. Mm -hmm. You need that. You need that vibration. That's what we are. That's what mm -hmm. we our spirits are. And this is what separates us from almost everybody on the planet. But we're we're keeping ourselves, allowing ourselves to uh, be uh, corralled under the system. And basically, we are being slaughtered here. You know, we're being slaughtered. They're just preparing us for the slaughter and pushing our kids through the school system. But we have to change that. Mm -hmm. We have to change that. And we have to come up with a plan to actually kind of yep. uh, flow ourselves into our own systematic way of learning and then put our children out in the world. But we, there's so many different things that we have to do. And like when I tell people and they start getting what I'm saying and I start adding things on, they'll ask me, well, what can I do? And, you know, what can you do? Because the, uh, the task is so overwhelming for people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because we live in a system, of, uh, a monetary system that is killing us, you know, um, this yeah. We don't know that the, a lot of us don't even know that the monetary system is controlled by a group of uh, private stakeholders, holders of, uh, from a company or an institution called the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. But just because they threw the word Federal Reserve in there, they, they basically the uh, think it's a, people think it's the federal government. Mm -hmm. Our country, this country borrows its money from this private institution. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You know, and you got to start looking at uh, so many different things. And and all, all this thing with slavery and the emancipation of people, you know, of black people, it, it was all about economics because they had to destroy the uh, economy that the slaves was generating in the South, because those uh, Europeans who were actually you said the key uh, word. To, that's why we yeah, got social security numbers because they making money. Yeah, the Europeans absolutely, and that's part are of making part money of, yeah, off of, of your, us. That's right. That's why we that's got that number. See, That's what your social security number is for. Just like an EIN number um, when you have an mm -hmm. LLC or any um, corporation. You know, and these people control, they came in it to control. They basically took over the country when they actually uh, passed the Federal Reserve Act under a lame duck Congress in 1913 uh, by a president uh, of Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson. You know, mm -hmm. if you look at it, um, they passed that mm -hmm. um, law and those people, uh, a war ensued right after that because war is uh, good for business. Mm -hmm. And then they immediately started financing the Hitler movement. These, the, our tax dollars were started going over there to Hitler and financing that movement. And after 1913, we had the first war. And then um, they basically engineered the Depression in 1929 to draw the United States into the war to get the United States into debt to the Federal Reserve. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, Henry Ford was supporting the Hitler. Hitler. Uh, Henry, uh, Hugo Boss designed the uniforms for the Nazis. And uh, Henry Ford knew that his investment in uh, Nazi Germany would, uh, you know, uh, re his return on investment would be tenfold because when the war started, who had to, um, who built the tanks, who built the cars, who built the ships, who built the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Jeeps? It was Ford. Henry Ford did. You know what I'm saying? So we don't look at these things. We are not looking at those things and saying, you know, uh, but the way these people think, they think 50 years out of, uh, you know, out of pocket. And then they may think out another 50 years, you know, and then things start coming to fruition because they do it uh, over two generations because they know so many people are going to die and not a lot of people are going to retain that information. So when the, when the uh, play starts uh, showing itself again, you know, most of us don't recognize it. You understand what I'm saying? So this is where we are with this, you know, and we have to be able to pay attention and understand history. History is uh, and the things that I'm telling you now. Some of it you can find in the history book, but a lot of it you kind of got to put the puzzle it. together. You mm -hmm. got to put the puzzle together. You know, That's just right. like when I said a thing about the uh, the uh, emancipation, people don't understand that because we celebrate Juneteenth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, let me, I want to talk about that since Juneteenth is upon us. 
Uh, guys, it's your girl, it's your girl. Palms up, palms up. Like we told you, we're going to always press forward and bring this content to you. Boy, there's some knowledge on this platform tonight, and, and, and it's planting the seed. It's meant to plant the seed. Uh, guys, you guys do your homework. You do your homework because it's important that we have something to pass to our children other than the popping the fingers and the thing. It's okay, but you got to have mm -hmm. a balance. Remember, we got to have a balance. Just like we have that social wellness understanding, there's also an intellectual wellness. And remember we talked about the wellness, the 80 centers of wellness being like legs on a table. If any one of those legs are not fed, if you are not holding yourself mm -hmm. accountable, you got a lopsided table, mm -hmm. right? And so there's your own built-in personal accountability. You don't have to walk around with a flag. You don't even have to tell anybody. You know, you know. Guys, we're going to plant the seeds for you, but if you're not willing to do anything to help yourself move along or grow, then how are you going to help the generation that's coming behind you? And that's what we should be wanting to do. Palms okay. up, it's your girl, it's your girl, Overseer Coles. We are talking some real talk. We thank our dear Mr. Greg Turner for coming through and, and, and dropping these pearls. Guys, you guys touched on so much. Let's see if I can go back. We were talking about the reality of knowing the history, the reality of understanding our social security number, being attached to how folks still make money off us, understanding that slavery and, and the whole understanding of such was to shut down, shut down the slavery economy. Um, everywhere we go as a people, everywhere we go as a people, we are resilient. And people know that about us. If they put us in a room together, we're gonna figure it out. Our strongest among us are gonna go out there and do that work and do what they have to do. We have talent in every genre, whether it is sports, entertainment, um, what was it, hockey, and, and some of the other sports that they dominate, golf, you know, that some of the other folks were dominating, here we come along. You give us a minute and we are going to rise to the occasion. Mm. We are a talented, resilient people. But on the same token, we are people that's rife with a lot of trauma because as you hear Mr. Turner say, our history, they don't want you to put it together because then that means they would have to be accountable. Right. I, yeah, every, exactly. other time I, every other time I turn on WHUR, guys, there's a discussion about uh, taking something out of the history books and you know, folks are, folks are mm -hmm. all up in arms. If we know that they're gonna do these types of things, then what are we doing at home? to get in place of, to be prepared for the understanding. If we're sending our children to learn at school and that's their only avenue for learning, shame on you. Shame on you, especially when we have so many outreach programs, so many understandings that we could get our children engaged and involved in. Guys, it's your girl, it's your girl. It's the Palms Up show. And just like we do, we're bringing you some knowledge this week. I want you guys to know that in my opinion, and, and speaking to the vein of what our dear guest is talking on, they're fighting us in a different way. And I say us, not because, you know, we're so special, but we are. But the reality is, is that history has shown them that we're vulnerable in mm -hmm. certain and particular areas. So they're creating and designing strategies to be able to make money off of who us. I was just having a conversation earlier. And we spend on average about a trillion dollars. Yep. And, and, and for the money that we are spending, our children should be better educated. Yep. We should not be begging for guns to not show up in our community for legislations to be written that take into account the very thing that's tearing us apart. We should not, not be voting. We should be at the polls. Guys, everybody is prospering because they're recognizing the fact that we have a weakness. We have a weakness. We're not willing to be disciplined to do the work to get the education. And I understand we can keep having the same argument about which came first, the chicken or the egg. But the reality is we know drugs are bad and they're still in our communities. We know that they're using these types of things to tear us down. So if my brother or my sister to my right or my left is going through something, and they are not strong enough to pull themselves out of it. Are you strong enough to allow them to lean on you? See, we got a lot of street line professors, but what are we really doing to help change this when we know history 
has an advantage over us. Guys, when we talk about crime in the district, overall it's up 25%. Violent crime is up 17%. Listen to these statistics. Year to date, we've got 98 killings. Um, we are six months in, which means we're already on track to surpass last year's number. Last year's number at this time was 85. So that means we're up 15% in our killings. And it's just June and it's just getting warm. Our vehicle theft is up 106%. 106%. Sexual abuse is up 34% from this time last year. Robberies up 25%. And I say this because we are in trouble. Our youths are in trouble. I saw on the news over in PG County, we were looking for, I believe it was a 12 year old, and actually he was 11 years old. And he had already been in trouble, mm -hmm. was supposed to be being watched. And before they could get him straight again, he's back in trouble. He 11 guys, mm -hmm. 11, 11. If that's not a red flag, for us to pay attention, they're shooting at the funeral where we're babying, a, where we're burying a young girl. What is it that we're going to care about if it's not one another? And where are my voices in the lives? Come on now. I understand not everybody can be at home with their child. I get it. You got to work. You got to pay. I get it. But the alarming rate of youth that are committing these crimes, you're not going to tell me that they're not your uncle, nephew, cousin, somebody you know extended, mm -hmm. somebody coming in the house. Where are they being harbored? Because 11-year-olds don't have enough money or they shouldn't have enough money to pay rent or mortgage. So where are they going home to? Where are they living? Who are they engaging that's old enough to know better? It's yeah. not okay. It's not okay to be sideline professing when you're watching the deterioration of our future. Mm -hmm. We got to care out there, guys. Hey, guys, I want to talk to you about this uh, D.C. government before we get out of here. I can't dare have such a good conversation like this and not talking about some really deep stuff. Not that this <laughs> is already deep. But I'm telling you, I mean, seriously, we're going to get this knowledge to our people one way or the other. We got D.C. officials, none of them changed. All of them went in, all of them were in office and they all went back in. We're seven years outside of an election, the mayor scheduled a meeting to ask the community, what should they do about the crime? The police chief is leaving. He's on to hire pastors and we're still here with an acting director for the health department, acting director, I believe, still for the Department of Buildings. Um, now, the police. What are we going to do in D.C. with the leadership? And, and what's your take on what we, where we are as a city? You know I have my opinion, but I want to open it up for you all. What role does leadership play in all of this? Um, I understand the situation. And people getting out before they have to be accountable. I like that. Come on, Greg, yes. you were going to say something? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, again, for politics, you know, I, I think, again, as a people, we have to create our own party, you know, uh, because everything is systematic. <laughs> so I, I believe in us. I, I have to believe in us. And the only way you can win the war is understand history, understand the history of wars. This is what we do. But I, I was in the military. Before we went to war, we understood our enemy before we went to war. Amen. And we have to you have to understand what you're what you're really fighting, what you're really fighting. Half the things that we need to be fighting against, we're actually cheering for in some mm -hmm. state, form or fashion. And that's mm -hmm. what we have need to uh, mentally prepare ourselves for. You know what I mean? So uh, the politicians, certain politicians are put in place. Uh, they have these fundraisers and certain mm -hmm. companies may uh, finance your um, campaign. And but when you when you uh, reach uh, if you win the election you, mm -hmm. you owe people they gonna favors. Call it those yeah. They're gonna you call it papers. those markers. Absolutely. Yeah, so, they're, so they're basically buying elections. You know what I mean? So and and, yeah. and this is what we have to if we um, create our own party. Do we go up against? Uh, do we go up against uh, these two uh, major political parties that's been around since? 
you know, the uh, 1600s and the 1700s. You know, the, uh, the Democratic Party has been, is the oldest uh, party uh, in the nation. Um, that was the party of the Klan. Yeah, you know, the Republican Party was, was uh, founded right around 1854. So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and a lot of Blacks were Republicans after the uh, mm -hmm. emancipation of the slaves. They sure were. They what sure happened? were. What happened? You know, we have to ask ourselves what happened, right? But we, we understand the Jim Crow laws because if they really cared about us when and they, during emancipation, they would have done something about the Jim Crow laws, which mm -hmm. lasted from uh, 1865 to 1970, I mean, you know, 1870 to 1965, you know, 95 mm -hmm. years of that, right? So it was, it was all about breaking up that economy. But going back to D.C. and everything, you know, in the elections, you know, mm -hmm. we really have to uh, watch the politics that we're participating in, mm -hmm. you know? We really do. And then we have to we have to at a grassroots level, we have to be able to uh, bring candidates out of our neighborhoods, mm -hmm. out of our communities. Come on now. Come you know what I'm saying? Up. And we got to bring. That's yeah, right. we got to bring the community uh, to the uh, to the forefront. That's and right. uh, somebody that's going to bring the community to the forefront. And I know Rhonda is uh, basically standing up for a lot of that, you know, yeah, so, you know, that, stand yeah. behind this lady. Yeah. Stand behind this lady. Yeah. I've talked to her so she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> You know? I appreciate oh, yeah. you, Greg. Yeah. I really do. And I'm, I'm, as I tell people, whether I'm running or not, I'm doing this because I'm about right. to see. I went mm -hmm. out to support groups and didn't realize what was out there until we got out there. And I was like, wait a minute. And mm -hmm. the hardest part about it was the perpetrators look like you and I. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. So all of this mm -hmm. spewing black versus white, that's how they keep us divided, right? Mm -hmm. This yeah. is a bigger conversation, and it's not fair to the folks who escaped their trauma, their mm -hmm. home life, to get over here to have a part of this dream that you were taught and fed. Yep, so, so who are we to keep other children and other families from being able to have access to the same dream that we have access to? They sold us on anyway. But the reality is we're here now. We have to decide. We have to draw the line in the sand and decide what will we care about if if ourselves and our own livelihood is not motivating enough for us to do something different. And so for me, I hope we would at least care about our children, right? Mm -hmm. People don't even care about the seniors. I'm just keeping it real. No, the they don't. Right now, it's out the window. People is all in for themselves. And then not until tragedy finds them, do they start reaching out, hey, I need help. Well, when you don't need help, what are you doing? You know, right. and I'm not speaking to the ones palms up that are already doing something, but do you realize, Greg, you mentioned that we need to have our own party. And as you were saying that, a thought went in my head. DC is predominantly Democrat. And over 300,000 people in that primary race, when I got in that, at the race, they weren't voting, they didn't vote, right? <laughs> so I'm saying to myself, what difference does it make if it's predominant Democrat, Republican, or whatever, the people ain't coming out. So it's right. not about party. So when we get into these conversations and people, oh, D.C., Democrat, it doesn't matter what you think D.C. is. The people aren't voting. So your mm. party or your representation should take that personal, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not motivating the masses. And so the reality is if we all came together on the principles Never mind patronizing party or friends and what you can get out of it and the hookup and all that other stuff. If we just came together on the principles, right? Parents tired of being intentionally separated out of their children's education. Parents tired of being told that they're going to be locked up when they try to discipline, but they got to be accountable when the child shows up in school and does mm -hmm. something different. So we've got to be able to take back control of our own narratives and if we could come together, as you said, and create a party, that would take the 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 the, the, the loose holder, or well, what you call it when you got them, the, the hand, exactly. handcuffs. That yeah. would take the handcuffs off of us because they automatically assume, just like the Europeans, you got that social security number, no matter what you do every day, they projecting and building their lives on the fact that you breathing and you here with a number. Mm -hmm. The Democrat party does the same thing. They assume mm -hmm. that because D.C. is a, de a democratic state and you're black, that most of the time black doesn't go with educated when it comes to politics. So they see opportunity. So what I've noticed with our blacks in this town that run for office or that have uh, been elected, they tend to think that they're higher than the next man 
because maybe they found out or they're into politics and we've got to start chopping those trees down. You don't mean nothing to nobody if you're not helping the people or helping the cause, period. Mm -hmm. And we have to stop apologizing for wanting to empower our race and to make up the difference for what we're losing. No other race is perishing faster than ours. No other race is dealing with the trauma on the level that we absorb it to the point where our children don't graduate, our seniors are sitting in isolation, unhealthy, our young men are out on drugs or committing crimes. No other race is perishing, but when you look at that, when you look at the root cause, how many grocery stores, what's the quality of the food coming through those grocery stores? What are the diets? Why we got all packaged and pre-processed and sugary type items? Everybody's drinking sodas. You know, we, we have more, what is it, uh, smoke and vaping shops on the corners than we have healthy food choice options. We are having a, a big event for Juneteenth, and I want to talk to you about that. We're having a big event for Juneteenth um, because we can't dare let that day go by. Whether the federal government is celebrating or not, we have to take advantage of opportunities to keep our story in front of people to let them know we're taking our narrative back. Federal holidays and recognitions are too important. We need to be having messages when you're on your social media. Our children are paying attention. We have to take advantage of every opportunity to get our message out. One of the uh, locations that we were looking at to do the breakfast, because we looked at DC and we looked at the landscape, trying to find a politically or black business that would host our event at that time in the morning, based on parking, all of the different narratives. Where is our black community from a business standpoint in DC that's supported and protected as these other corporations that don't do right by us are? So there's so much to talk about, guys. They're fighting us in the schools uh, with our children. They're fighting a different war. There's a reason why you don't know what your child is doing when they come home. It's designed like that. That's and I'm right. going to say it. I'm sure I'm going to get controversy, but I don't care. 11-year-olds have no business getting vaccinated or anything else without parental consent. That's that right. is the first sign that they're separating the family. The second yeah. thing is, if a child goes to school and is going through something and they have a conversation with the counselor and it's gender reassignment coming out of it, that child should not be counseled by anybody outside of their parents to understand what direction they're going to go. These brains haven't developed all the way yet. Right. You know, changing your body and doing things to, to follow what you feel today when you are a child and your brain hasn't had the chance to continue to develop is not okay to prey on our children. You can give me every logic example you want, but tell me why a child on spring break should be exposed in the showers to a, a, a transgender individual. That's your choice to be trans transgender. But why are you in the showers where our children are coming? It's just no responsibility or accountability to the reality that we have to be responsible for our children to give them an opportunity to grow into the healthy beings that they're going to be. And if it's healthy for them to have these understandings about their bodies and things, then why isn't it healthy to bring the parents into the environment and educate them along the way? You cannot keep separating children from families for your own agenda, and then we sit up and watch it happen. Guys, it's your girl, it's your girl, palms up. I love this. You know, Greg, I think we have to do a part two. You have to look at your schedule and tell me when you can come back because sometimes we have to slow it down and do this. And this is yeah, what yeah, I like so. doing. We got to yep. have conversations. Guys, before we get out of here, a couple of things you guys said. You talked about uh, the lack of enforcement for the laws when we talk about the gun violence. You talked about the lack of education when we talk about them landing, the guns landing in the wrong people's hands. So I'm going to ask you guys, before we get out of here, each one of you, leave us a conscious thought to take with us as it relates to this issue of gun violence, because I can promise you it's very personal and passionate for the mother or the father, the grandparent or the family that just buried their loved one from gun violence. And when they hear us talking about the gun violence in relation to the Second Amendment and having rights, they think that you're talking from a standpoint that you don't care about the death. And that's not it. That's not, of course, we care about human life. 
But if we stay on this cycle that they have us on, feeding us what they want us to believe and understand because we won't go and get the knowledge. And even when people that look like us bring the story back, we get, we're vested too. We have just as much to lose as you all do. So when we figure that out and come together, we can be a mighty force and that's my word. So I'm going to give it to you, Greg. When you hear us or see us grappling as a nation's capital with this gun violence, the way that we are and leaders that are not accountable, what say you as we wrap up? Yeah, I mean, I, again, you know, um, all of this gun violence is going on because, you know, they want to disarm Americans. Uh, I, I'm looking at a bigger picture. I, I don't know if I have the time to share that whole scenario with you and how we got here at this point, because this country is moving in a direction that none of us really want to go in, but we're cheering for it. You know, um, again, if we don't understand the war, uh, we can't fight it. You know, uh, we, they, they will have you, they will have you, they will have you fighting the war for them. That's and, right. you know, and you're, you're bringing them up upon your, among your, uh, your, uh, your, 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 you're bringing up on your own, your own demise, mm -hmm. you know, as a people, mm -hmm. uh, if you don't understand how this war is being fought, because we are at war, you know, and we I'm don't understand that. that. Yes. Yeah, we are I'm glad you and, and we said have that we that. are. They're just fighting the war differently. And right. two things came to mind when you said that. Muhammad Ali, when they tried to send him the way he said, ain't no big Kong ever, ever called me nigga, yeah. you right. know? And the second thing is the reality of George Bush and his weapons of mass destruction. See, war mm -hmm. brings money and mm -hmm. people don't realize that. And so thank you for saying that we are at war because that's where the money is. And that's mm -hmm. when they start packaging and selling us everything. But that doesn't right. mean jump over to the Democrats and listen to them because they pushing down the Republicans or the Republicans want poor. No, that's not what we're saying. What we're saying is get educated and hold right. them all accountable because if right. a Democrat, look around. Has your life conditions changed? Because I'll be honest, every time I was in, every time a Republican was in office as a small businesswoman, I made money. But see, mm -hmm. what you got to understand is, oh, well, fill up, inflation, what that word mean? We're consumers. Mm -hmm. So inflation is bad when you're a consumer. But when you're an investor, you want inflation. That's not black or white. That's just money 101. But Sorry. if we're not in the know, then we're walking around with everybody else talking about, oh, God, because they sell us to understand that. We're taught that we're supposed to walk this life in that mindset. And until mm -hmm. we do something different, we're going to pass it down. And that's the cycle we're talking about. So at the top of the hour, we ask you, are you woke? That's how we advertise the show. And you know we got to do a second show because I talk too much. Thanks, Greg, for that. Hey, Ann. <laughs> <You can't. laughs> I mean, this is yeah. real stuff, you know. Yeah. I'm not yeah. going to talk in the circumstance. No, nah, but it me. needs to be said. It needs to be mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. We need to stop being chicken and talk about it for real. Yeah, I, I definitely. I we definitely, under, the sheet, under, the, under the sheets, too. I was just ain't white, okay? Yeah. That's right. Absolutely. And, and, and it, ha it has to happen, uh, you know, I, I, I live this, you know, my thing is research. I belong to a research team for years and I still, I, I'm still with them. And all we do is put the puzzle together and, mm -hmm. and because we have to understand what it is we're actually up against. And if you do not understand your enemy, you will never, you will never win a, win a battle. The people Amen. who are perpetrating a lot of these things are the ones who are writing the history. And if they, mm -hmm. you give them a chance to write the history, they will they'll never tell uh, something that brings attention to themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is what Amen. we're dealing with at this point. You know what I mean? Amen. So, Amen. Yeah. Hey, hey, guys. Yeah, it's, right right. Right. it's set up for us to destroy ourselves. Uh, yeah. I remember a couple of years ago uh, with this organization and a report came that a whole slew of automatic guns was just dropped in a poor part of Chicago. Now, you know, we don't have access to that. You know where mm -hmm. it came from, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but nobody yeah. knows nothing. But see, that's again, that's again, we can have the conversations all day, every day about, uh, they've done it so much, like their pattern of behavior. If somebody mm -hmm. keeps doing the same thing, then you don't have to look too far to understand the logic, right? But I'm going to go right back to the understanding of now what? We know this, now what are we gonna do? Because if we are raising our children from the standpoint, oh, they did it, so they're wrong, this, right. there's no, this is life. 
This is it. life. Mm -hmm. We got to teach them, even life. though they did it, we going to do better. Have to. Right. Have right. To. And, and, and we can we can bring attention to it, like you said, but we have to uh, be accountable for our lives because if you we understand that they've been doing this for years and decades, or whatever the case may mm -hmm. be, hundreds of years, then uh, what makes you think they're going to uh, fix it, fix the problem at this point? And just you know? roll over because you cry and yeah. it's not fair. Yeah. When they exactly. take care of generation, see, that's the beauty. And that's, that's why I it. love this eight essentials of wellness, guys. Come on now, thumbs mm -hmm. up. Sorry mm -hmm. we're going over, but it's worth it. I hope you're sitting down here and, and, and you're building on this conversation. We're not telling yeah. you to stop here. We're telling you to start here, right? Yeah. And we're right. going to stay committed to keep on bringing you this conversation. But let's talk about it, guys. We talked about the eight essentials of wellness. Let me give them to you again. Emotional, environmental, financial, intellectual, occupational, physical, social, spiritual. Guys, daily, do your assessment. Figure out where you're weak and where you can do some strength. Tonight, we're touching that intellectual leg. We challenge you because if you are not willing to grow your mind, you can't pass anything mm -hmm. down of substance. You can't stay stuck on yesterday's conversation when people go to sleep and wake up trying to figure out how to make a dollar on your back. Come yep. on now. Come on. Right. We talked about financial wellness, right? We talked about the understanding of the dollar where you can think it's about money if you want. If you understand how money works, then you will be halfway in the battle, ready to bring your children and your family along. But for, for people, most of us don't understand how money works. So when we don't understand how money works, we don't get the logic. We want to bring our feelings into everything. Well, I ran a real estate company for years. And I'm going to tell you something. With all the races we did business with, all of them, they are green when it comes to doing business. Don't nobody care about your feelings. They might tell you that to get your dollar. But at the end of the day, we always want to bring emotions into it. And don't nobody care about your emotions when you're out there supposed to be equipped you're supposed to be equipped for this world. That's yep. why we talk about mental health. That's why we do it differently because we want you to know, don't wait till you fall apart looking through the book to find a doctor that don't look like you and you wonder why you're still going in the cycle and not getting the help you need. You need culturally relevant resource. Mm -hmm. For years, we oh, I don't want a black doctor. Really? Really? Program. Program. Mm -hmm. We have got to start breaking the cycles and, and, and it's not too late. It's not too late. Every day is an opportunity to do something different. You just have to choose wisely, guys. It's your girl. It's your girl. And I'm going to put them on the spot. Mr. Turner, please tell me you can come back one of these days and get on this uh, uh, so we can talk and keep this going. Because like you said, it's so much that we need to break down. You being a soldier, we hadn't even touched on your military work. There are so many other topics I want us to talk about. And mm -hmm. I just really appreciate you for accepting our invite. So please do me a favor, check your schedule and let me know when we can do part two and we're going to put oh, no. it back in the air. All right? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Oh, no. Thank Hold you. We up. do our Black Brothers. And look, for National Men's Health in the month of June, I need you to take care of your mental and your physical Black man because we love you. Absolutely. We need you. And at some point, we're going to get this thing going in the right direction and we want our children to be able to see our folks and understand this knowledge. So thank you. Please take Understood. care. And, All right, you and too. Just know we're going to share this feed and we're going to tag you on it and get the word around. The minute you tell me the data, I'm going to put it out there. We got to do okay. this again really soon. <laughs> okay, we'll talk All right. shortly after this in the next couple of days, okay? Okay, that sounds All good. Right. Hey, hey, okay. Ann, hey, Ann, it's your girl, it's your girl, and we're getting out of here. Ann, you want to say something before we get out of here to the time, folks? Just stay steadfast. You believe in something, work it. Don't let nobody tell you different. Just stay, stay there, stay there, stay there. And prove them wrong. Amen. Amen. It's your girl. It's your girl. Palms up. We out of here. Intellectual right, and wellness. Keep it going. Bye, Greg. See ya. All right, now. See y'all later. Take care, All everybody. Bye-bye. Right. Bye-bye. Palms up. Bye-bye. <laughs>